Okay, uh, whenever you, uh, you can start whenever uh, you want to. So, um, just to start with some like terminology and some like explanation of basic definitions. Um, so I'm Lana, uh, and <laughs> I'll be debating uh, pro decriminalization of sex work. Um, and I'm gonna start with a bunch of definitions and terminology just so the rest of the debate is like clear. So um, full service refers to adults having sex with someone else for money as a transaction. And adults who engage in full service are sex workers and their clients. Um, not all sex workers do full service to be clear, um, but for brevity of this debate, I'm mostly gonna be referring to them as full service or just sex workers. But to be clear, I'm referring to full service sex workers. So I'm not, um, I, at times where I'm also referring to other types of sex workers, I will specify so. Um, so sex work can be um, made illegal by making selling sex, um, brothels, living off the avails of a sex worker, or the purchase of sexual services illegal. Um, there are things called end demand laws, which also, um, also are called the Nordic model, rely on making the work legal, but making um, being a client illegal. Um, living off the avails of a sex worker is defined as living off of the money earned from sex work. So like usually being a pimp or sometimes a brothel. Um, but a lot of countries that legislatively do have laws um, where they define living off the avails of a sex work, such as Canada and the UK, um, usually also define um, it as collecting. Um, so being a landlord to a sex worker or splitting rent with a sex worker, AKA you're a roommate with a sex worker, or even being hired one to do something like answer phones. Um, so sometimes living off the avails laws can be very broad. Um, even if sex work is decriminalized, minors engaging in any way in sex work is still illegal and trafficking adults is still e illegal. So if you decriminalize sex, it doesn't like, uh, it, it doesn't legalize trafficking, just to be clear. Um, and some major organizations that publicly support decriminalization with papers and research include the United Nations um, Program on HIV AIDS, which is called UNAIDS. The World Health Organization recommends that countries start moving towards decriminalization. Um, Human Rights Watch encourages um, decriminalization. United Nations Population Fund, UN, uh, UNFPA, um, is in support of decriminalization, Amnesty and International, the Open Societies Foundation, The Lancet, which is a medical journal, and the ACLU are just a couple organizations that support publicly decriminalization of sex work. So my arguments will include um, uh, arguments uh, talking about sex trafficking, um, arguments talking about how sex work is often viewed as morally wrong, and um, arguments about uh, the pros to the health and safety of sex workers, um, of consensual sex workers. So <clears throat> to start off, um, consensual sex work is often conflated and even blamed for the reality of sex trafficking. Um, sex trafficking is a heinous crime. It relies on a, an extensive black market to force people, often minors and migrants, especially into performing uh, sex acts. While many people don't realize there's trafficking in all, all work industries, including agriculture, domestic housework, um, other fields of work, um, people only really focus on um, like sex trafficking. Um, and I do understand that it is um, the most psychologically damaging for the victim, but it is basically the only one that most people talk about or are aware of. Um, I looked at three different countries. Um, the, the U.S. State Department has a really extensive report on sex trafficking. Um, they have a report on every single country, and they talk about um, their current trafficking uh, culture, and they also talk about um, policy recommendations to, um, to curb it. And so I looked at three different countries that have different levels of legalization, decriminalization, and um, criminalization, which I can get into more later. Um, but according to the US State Department, um, uh, none of these countries have ended sex trafficking, including the ones with criminalization. Um, the one that does have um, criminalization happens to have a really robust sex tourism industry, whereas the other two do not. Um, and the one with decriminalization has issues with vulnerable populations being targeted, same as the other two. Um, but my, um, my overall conclusion after doing a lot of research is that decriminalization doesn't end trafficking, um, but 
a lot of people say that it increases trafficking and I don't, I haven't actually found this. And, um, basically like a lot of people will argue that decriminalization makes trafficking way worse. And I, I have not actually found this in my research. Um, for my second point, um, sex work is often viewed as being morally wrong. People call people who engage with sex work and their, their clients, uh, degenerate often opponents who argue that sex work is unnecessary, think that, um, clients should only engage with people who are authentically interested in them with no money involved. Um, they also argue that engaging in any type of sex work, um, but especially full service workers are experiencing the worst of misogyny by having their sexuality treated as a commodity. However, these same people have no problems with transactional marriages, uh, especially of the rich and famous, and they have no problems with dating apps. They also feel, fail to recognize practical solutions to issues in society, such as men who have poor social skills or high anxiety, or men who are physically or mentally disabled having lifelong issues meeting and attracting women. They also fail to recognize the autonomy of women in these situations. Often, women who engage in sex work are marginalized, even in countries that have some form of legalization or decriminalization. Um, women are not barred from working in other industries, but they choose to do sex work anyway. Um, because misogyny does not disappear outside of the sex industry, and it pays way more than McDonald's, um, and the hours are way more flexible. Um, and my last point to discuss is the health and safety benefits of women who choose sex work. Um, so under decriminalization, uh, let's see, ooh. the U.S. State Department noted in their report on New Zealand, specifically the country that has decriminalization, noted that there was an increase in legal and police protections for sex workers in New Zealand stemming directly from decriminalization. Um, in the current age in America, due to SESTA and FOSTA, which are two laws that claim to end trafficking, but really just um, make it so um, consensual sex, work sex workers cannot um, use online venues legally. Um, it it's really complicated. We can get into it later. But basically, they ban things like Backpage, websites that... Um, that you can advertise sex work and also it holds social media and other websites accountable for any sex work that happens on their platform um and so um those two laws actually make it um they criminalize blah 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 it's more difficult for full service sex workers to negotiate terms of their agreements uh on terms that they feel safe with so they can meet online, they can screen online, they can make sure that they get somebody's ID, get someone's STD test, and they could do that and feel safe and never have to physically interact with the client. But now, sex workers are pushed to the margins, um, having to walk streets or having to engage with local black markets to find clients. Uh, in many countries, including the US, carrying many condoms um, especially while being any sort of minority, you will be targeted by the police and that will be used as evidence of prostitution charges if you have condoms on you. Um, so that can actually make using condoms a risk in countries where criminalization is legal. Um, while not using condoms can lead to STDs and for a lot of people, unwanted pregnancy. And many sex workers, um, especially in countries with criminalization, um, lie to their healthcare providers because they fear social and legal repercussions. Um, not to mention, it's just very difficult to negotiate condom usage when your client can literally call the police on you for being a prostitute. Um, so, in all, I think that um, decriminalization will be safer, uh, healthier, uh, and I think overall it will, it could aid in ending demand for trafficking. So. All right. It's my turn, right? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So, hello, everyone. My name is Decap, Decapre, Deco, whatever. I'm here to argue against um, decriminalization of uh, sex work. So, first of all, just just to be clear, I'm I am going to use sex worker and sex work instead of prostitute and prostitution. Uh, out of respect and because I don't want to be rude or to offense uh, anybody that happened to be in that position. But after after doing so many research and listening to so many testimonies of a survivor of this industry uh, that are actually advocating and fighting against 
the fact that we call it sex work because it, for them it's absolutely not a work. I, I just I'm just going to mention that as well, out of respect for those women. Uh, but I'm I'm going to use sex work anyway for for the sake of the conversation. So let's start. Prostitution or sex work. So again, I'm focusing on sex work. Is a hard work. It's not a job like it's not a job uh, like any other job. I personally highly doubt that your parents are expecting you to engage in the sex work industry to pay for your schools or to pay for your rent. I don't think they expect you to do that. So who are the people that society consider fit for this work? I want you to ask yourself that question. Who is like um, the kind of people that, uh, should, that, 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 that should be okay with uh, going into this industry? Because if you agree with sex work decriminalization, you are basically selling down the river the most marginalized people in the world. The hundreds of thousands, the millions of people all around the world who are exploited every day by this industry. You ignore the countless vulnerable children, the minorities, the disfranchised people, everyone that is basically forced into it. We are talking about the young, the underage, the women, the people of color. The, 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 the sex work industry have the highest homicide risk. Like the, the highest homicide rate for a man job is like taxi driver. Sex worker is seven times higher than that. It's far, far, far higher than average. There are like countless suicides. Uh, you get killed. You die young. You fall into drug abuse. You die out of overdose. You get depressed. It's, it's, it's not a job like any other. Sex, working, sex work is founded on racism and gender inequalities and poverty. This is a fact that is recognized by the European Women's Lobby, by the Coalition Against Trafficking Women, by the End Violence Against Women Coalition, by the people of Sweden, by the people of Iceland, by the people of Norway. This is a fact recognized by all of that. You might think um, of this industry as what you can see in some movies, like Pretty Woman, for instance. But this is just a fantasy. And this is something that we should fight against, actually, because this, has, this is an industry that damages countless of men, women, and child only, only for the sake of the pleasure of a minority of men, a minority of men. Legalizing brothel across a country, because this is what decriminalization is, will change nothing. Unfortunately, women are still raped in legal brothel. Uh, you can see that in New Zealand, you can see that in Australia, you can see that in Germany. Um, another thing, this is a hard fact that where there is a legal industry, there will be an illegal one, whatever the industry is. But there will always be illegal immigrants, poor underage people, desperate women that need to pay the bill. Those, those are going to be a, a constant thing. So as long as there is this legal side, there will be a legal, a legal one that are going to exploit them as well. Legalizing brothel doesn't get rid of the underground prostitution. Actually, it expands it because it expands the sector. If you give a green light, if you make it decriminalized, you create more vacancy. And those vacancies are going to be filled with more people of the sex working industry, including the illegal one that are getting um, uh, trafficked into it. If you make it de facto legal, that men have kind of a birth a, a birthright of uh, sex toward women, you are crossing a line that I don't think if you look into it like deeply you want to cross because it can lead to a lot of like crazy stuff. But we can go over that later. Prostitution, sex work, is about men sex entailment. It's about men that are exercising power on women. The sex work industry is not about buying sex, all right? That's a fantasy as well. It's not about that. It's about buying consent. The sex work industry and their customer are just exploiting poverty and misery. They are filling a void that we created because we have a broken welfare system. This is a failure of society. We created a void, we created those kind of situation, individual situation, 
And the sex industry is filling this void by uh, giving them this quote unquote alternative. As a country, what we need to do is to step up. We need to fix our broken system. We need to, to not push away our most vulnerable people, the young disfranchised, the women, the minorities, the migrants. We need to stop pushing them into this industry. And what we, what we don't need <laughs> is to give up and let this industry basically uh, act as a replacement for what should be food stamp, for instance. The sex industry is not food stamp. It's not a social, it's not social worker. Another thing, the sex work industry is not a victimless crime. So let's, let's go back to the definition. And I appreciate that we, we try to define the word we are using. So I'm going to, to define human trafficking. Human trafficking is the second largest international crime. It is also the fastest growing one. The annual profit worldwide of human trafficking is basically three times Apple. There is two types of human trafficking, and it concerns between 20 million and 29 million of people. The experts agree that this is basically, by any definition, modern day slavery, right? When we talk about human trafficking, we are talking about modern day slavery. So there is two types, like I said. The first one is labor traffic, like in switch for instance, or in agriculture. The second type is sex trafficking. It's like forced or coerced prostitution. So the legal definition of sex trafficking under federal law is a commercial sex act that is induced by forced, fraudulent coercion. Or if it targets an underage. If it targets an underage, it's automatically uh, sex trafficking. That's the federal law definition of sex trafficking. So any sex work that is induced by force, threat, coercion, psychological manipulation, brainwashing, or that involves any minor is automatically sex trafficking. That's, again, the fixed uh, internationally recognized definition of it. You need to keep that in mind for later. So as much as it, it, there is something else, it's important to distinguish uh, human smuggling and human trafficking. Human smuggling is like voluntary. It's illegal, but what you are doing is like a crime against the border, basically. Trafficking is slavery. It's not voluntary. It's a crime, a crime against a person, not a border. So now I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. Who is victim of sex traffic? So a homeless boy is 16 year old and is just trading sex for food. Is he victim of sex traffic? A 21-year-old woman who walk on the street because they, they, they don't want their boyfriend to beat them up again, are they victims of sex traffic? A 35-year-old woman who has sex uh, for, so, so, they, so their pimp or, or drug supplier, because it's the same thing most of the time, will give them their like, dose of heroin. Is that sex trafficking? A 17-year-old prostitute that had no pimp. 17-year-old prostitute that have no pimp, a sex worker, sorry, that have no pimp. Is she a victim of sex trafficking? Well, all of the examples that I said above, they are all, according to the definition of sex traffic, those people are all victims of sex trafficking under the law. All right? The first one that I said and the last one are not child prostitutes. That doesn't exist. What they are is prostitute child, victim of sex traffic. And it doesn't matter if they tell you that they are a victim. Like that doesn't matter anymore. Like we are talking about like the legal definition. So even if they tell you that they concerned, they are happy about it, we don't care about that. Like their situation is the definition of sex trafficking. Now let's debunk some myth. A sex worker is a high class school girl that is like sexually empowered. She's a, like an entrepreneur. Uh, that's bullshit. All right. Uh, it's possible that you voluntarily choose to do it, right? But the majority of people that are in it are victims of sex traffic. The majority of them, like the, va the, ma the majority, they are all uh, going into the definition of sex trafficking. The majority of people that are in, 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 in the sex working industry, most specifically uh, the full service uh, sex working industry, are not consenting because they are not adults. I mean, there are some adults that are not consenting to it, and they are also uh, uh, underage. So those them are, are the majority of the of the people that are in the sex uh, uh, sex sex industry, in the full service sex industry. So 
uh, they did a survey in Arizona, Arizona, right, in the US, on 120 people that are in the sex work full service industry. It showed that 119 of them met the legal definition of sex trafficking. It's above 99% of the sample. Something else that you need to understand, the average age of entry into the sex uh, work industry, full service again, in Arizona still, is between 14 year old and 15 year old. So it's easy to understand something like, think about it. You have this girl, she is sexually abused by her dad at 12 year old, right? She go into the sex work industry at 15 year old. And now at 18 year old, she's saying she's willing to be a sex worker. I think it's a fair question to question that choice, right? Is it really a free choice when you are led to it by that series of events? I don't think so. So if we look at a sex work, full service sex work industry as what it really is, we easily understand that uh, we really we easily understand why so few people choose it because uh, they want it. Like it's a really tiny minority of people that really want to do it, right? Um, I know for, I know for, um, I'm going to do my best to be quick. I don't want to be too long, but let's do a quick uh, debunking session as well. True or false? Uh, most sex worker uh, women are in the street. That's false. Uh, they are happening online, mostly. Uh, most buyers of sex are lonely guys, like loser, beta male, right, who can't find a woman. That's false. The vast majority of buyers are married. Most of them are kids. Um, most uh, sex working activity occur on Friday or Saturday night. That's false. Uh, it happens mostly on mon from Monday to Friday during lunch hour. You know why? Because those guys are married and they want an alibi, an alibi, an alibi, an alibi, an alibi right? So that's why it happened during lunchtime during the weekday because they don't want their wife to know about it. Those guys, they are, they are, they are not like uh, lacking uh, opportunity of having sexual intercourse. It's not the reason why they do that. Um, when you start um, getting into this industry, your average life expectancy, average, is around seven years. That's how dangerous it is. Here are the results of a survey about women in this industry. So 86% of women report physical assault from their client and pimp. 70% of them had weapon used against them. 35% of them had death threats against their family or themselves. 65% of them were blackmailed uh, with pornography made of them. And 64% of them were confined or kept into isolation. Again, full service sex work is not a victimless crime. Sex workers are at worst, at worst, a victim of a violent coercive sex traffic. That's true. But at best, they are a victim of a sexist society that condoned commercialized gender-based violence. Why? It's simple. Sex work, full service sex work is not about sex, like I said. Most clients can have that elsewhere, right? The customer, they are not paying for that. They are paying for the opportunity to exert total power and control over someone. They are paying for the opportunity to sexually assault someone, right? They are paying to act out their own violent, degrading, dehumanizing fantasy. It's not about sex, it's about power. That's something you need to understand. They want to buy consent. That's what, that's what it is about, buying consent. So what can we do about it? I mean, obviously we need to, 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 to help those, peop those people. So some people want to legalize it, regulate it, or decriminalize it. Uh, that, it's something that intuitively makes sense because Obviously, if, if sex work uh, was legal, a sex worker could demand better work condition, they could unionize, uh, they could like uh, request like some set of rule, like use a condom, um, STD test, like all of that sounds super good, right? But if we uh, get rid of the ideological and we focus on the empirical data and facts, we can easily see that empirically, it has failed like big time where it was done. The Netherlands legalized it, the economical demand raised up, 
the supply of voluntary sex worker was not enough to meet the demand, obviously. So what happened? Sex trafficking jumped in to provide for the demand, as it always do in every industry. In the Netherlands alone, it, the, the, child, the child traffic, the, the child sex traffic in this, uh, activity increased by 300% after it was legalized. Um, in, even though it's legal in Germany, by the way, because it is legal in Germany, 59% of the sex workers say that it doesn't change anything about it being safer or not. It, it doesn't change anything. Only, and only 10% of them, of those sex workers, choose to register as a sex worker for many reasons. Like if you are a child, if you are underage, you are not going to register because obviously it's illegal. You are going to, like, it's not going to happen. If you are like an illegal migrant, obviously you are not going to register. And what the black market is preying into, they are preying on the most vulnerable ones, the one that uh, are not going to call the police. <laughs> an illegal migrant is not going to call the police if they are getting assaulted because they don't want to go back to their country, right? An underage um, a sex worker is not going to call the police as well because they are in an illegal position. This is not going to help them at all. Legalization, regulation, decriminalization, it's going to help a tiny minority of the women that are in the industry right now. So, like I said, sex work, like full service sex work, is not a victimless crime. It's not an industry like any other. Um, thank you. I'm done. Nice. Um, uh, Lana, whenever you, you, you're free, you can ask if you have clearance or like if you have if you want to something something stuff cleared and then you can go <clears throat> um, i have one question um I, t I took a lot of notes and i'll probably respond to them throughout um but okay so i wanted to ask about so you said there was a a, a survey of german sex workers i'm assuming um, do they have legalization or criminalization or i'm sorry do they have legalization or decriminalization just to be clear no, to be clear, to be clear, the the only country that um, that have decriminalized it, and even decriminalization, you need to be specific because you can decriminalize it without decriminalizing the brothel, and you can decriminalize it and decriminalizing the brothel. So, if we are talking specifically about the kind of decriminalization that uh, also decriminalizes the brothel, we are talking about New Zealand, we are talking about a few states in Australia, and we are talking mm -hmm. about Arizona. That's all. Oh, everything um, else is not that. So the, the Germans had legalization, not criminalization, because you said in saying, the, yeah. there was a survey that they didn't think that legalization helped them, but they're talking about legalization, not decriminalization, just to be clear. Yeah, you, 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 uh, you are absolutely correct. What I meant by that is that uh, either it's decriminalization or legalization, it doesn't change the fact that um, the reason why you want to decriminalize it is because you want those sex workers to be able to call the police or to get help and not being hunted down. But for the for the majority of the sex worker, it's not going to change anything to them anyway, because those people are in an illegal situation, either because they are underage or because they are illegal migrants, undocumented, or because they just don't want to have the social stigma. They don't want to go to the police station and say, I am a sex worker. So they are going to live in the shadow anyway. That's why when they legalized it, only like um, a, a, a tiny portion, 10% actually. And 10% is a generous one. It's a really generous one. It's, actually, it's definitely less than that, but I'm being like charitable. 10% of them were willing to uh, come out with like, I am a sex worker. That's the reason why I mentioned this, but obviously it's not a, a decriminalization. Um, okay, so um, I don't, I, I previously, I want to be clear, I used to previously support legalization. I thought that legalization would help or that there wasn't that big of a distinction between legalization and decriminalization. Um, I think for drugs, like I, I saw your debate with Logan, and I definitely think with drugs, this is very different. Um, but I think with sex work, I actually think decriminalization is like a much better option than even legalization. And here's why. So when you have legalization, what happens is like you will, if you decriminalize it, 
um, there are no legal repercussions for selling or buying sex. Um, I'm not really going to make any arguments about brothels, like whether or not they should be legal. I don't actually know. Um, I don't know the answer. I don't really care, to be honest, um, because I'm not concerned about like making sure that brothels are legal. That's actually a whole separate issue, like starting a business where you're making money off of other people having sex. That's like kind of um, like maybe sketchy to me. Um, but on the other hand, um, selling and buying sex should be legal. Um, because, um, I think that when you have a situation where someone is, um, if you have a situation where you even have legalization, for example, um, you're always going to have people who are technically illegal. Like you're describing, there's always going to be people who are minors. There's always going to be people who are, um, migrants. Like, I don't think sex trafficking will ever necessarily end. There are people who don't want sex work. They want like slaves they want like sex slaves they want children um that is fucked up that should never be legal okay to be clear um but the reality is there is a demand for that that is independent of um people wanting to have sex for money right because people have sex for different reasons there are some people um and, and this is like clear outside of like sex work i mean there are people who have sex for like the social status of showing to other men look who i had sex with there are men who just have sex just for the experience of it there's people who only have sex because they love someone there are all different kinds of reasons to have sex and this is true in sex work as well there are different kinds of clients and there are people who just straight up are predatory fucking assholes. This is always going to be true. But decriminalization gives people the personal agency and ability to um, start their own business and say no when they want to. This is why I actually, I'm not sure if I think brothels are okay because brothels can be really exploitative. They can make rules telling you, you have to have sex with this person because it's your turn. And it doesn't matter what you think. That's really complicated. I don't know the answer. I would, I would have to do... A lot of like research and talking to a lot of people working at different brothels to see if they're a good idea. I think the answer is probably no. Um, but I think if somebody can decide for themselves like what's worth it to them, then they can't ever complain that somebody is like somebody outside of maybe the client is like exploiting them. That's a relationship between them and that person, like a, a transactional relationship between them and that person. And that can be true with dating. Um, that can be true in other aspects of this person's life. And like, we're not going to legislate. Um, uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to legislate basically like um, all these other types of inequities and stuff. And, and I don't think that we can necessarily like get rid of sexism overnight. Um, I also wanted to point out, uh, this is a little unrelated because I, I mostly wanted to focus on trafficking before we move on because I think it's like the most pertinent. Um, let's see, wait. Um, let's see. You said that trafficking and slavery, which I totally agree with, um, it is literally just slavery, um, which is also why it applies to other industries as well. Um, it happens in a lot of industries. America specifically um, has a very robust sex tourism industry where they import a lot of people, especially to major city centers. Um, it's a huge problem. And I think that in America, um, so I, I did a lot of research on America, New Zealand, and Australia um, on like their US, uh, the US State Department's reports on them on trafficking. And um, America has a lot of sex trafficking. They do a lot of stings. Um, which is awesome, like that they're they're trying to combat uh, sex trafficking. But the problem that I do have is that they only focus on sex trafficking and they don't focus on other forms of trafficking. But they have the resources to do so, but they only recognize sex trafficking because they only view women as victims. They don't also view men who are also being trafficked in other industries as a problem, which that's horrible. And you're, you're neglecting that there is modern day slavery going on and you're only focusing on one part of the problem. And I agree that sex, sex trafficking is horrible. And it's not acceptable. It is not okay to do that. But the reality is we need to focus on more, more, like more than just uh, sex trafficking. We need, need to focus on like modern day slavery as a whole. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to, answer, I'm going to address some of the, the claim that you made. Um, so you, you say that even under decrim decriminalization, uh, underage sex workers are, are going to be illegal, correct? Yes. Well, that's false. Actually, not in New Zealand. New Zealand is like the perfect, uh, like if you need to pick one real life example of decriminalization, this is New Zealand. This is the one that you, that, you, that you talk about as well. In New Zealand, it's not true. 
I, I have posted the source. I can post it again if you want. It is literally like the law, like in the website of the government of New Zealand. Uh, if the if the cop catch an uh, underage uh, sex worker, they're not going to prosecute. They're not going to do anything at all. So this is this is the first thing. Uh, let me let me post it if you want. Hold on. So my um, understanding was that um, I, I just want to be clear. So my understanding was that they previously had some sort of like um, they had some yeah. sort of thing where I think there were certain provinces where they were for some reason like um, okay with 16, 17 year olds, and then they became very, very public, and it's no longer allowed, or that like it wasn't actually allowed, but they were like doing it illegally. I'm a little unclear on like what happened, but all of the cases of 16 and 17 year olds like quote unquote legally having sex was like very public, very rare, and like not allowed to my understanding. So so I just posted the pros the Prostitution Reform Act of 2003 in New Zealand legis legis legislation. It's like the Parliament Council Office website, right? If you look at number three, it says literally no person under 18 years of age may be charged as a party to an offense committed on or with that person against this section. It is like literally like if you are under 18, that's okay. Like we are not going to prosecute you. No, 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 no. That yes. no, I, no, no, no. They can't prosecute them for prostitution. So actually, this is a, this is a this is a problem in the U.S. So let me let me explain. So in the U.S., um, we actually so having like um prostitution is the charge. Okay, so if you are caught having sex for money, you get charged personally with prostitution. This is specifying that you cannot charge someone who is under 18. That doesn't mean that they're allowed to do it. It just means that you're not allowed to be charged. So in the U.S., there's like a huge problem where trafficking victims get charged with prostitution um and then like we also have like okay so i'm sorry I, there's like a lot to this so in america we have um you can charge um underage people with prostitution even if they're um being trafficked there are certain states that have laws called safe harbor laws where they actually um talk about um oh if you are a victim of trafficking then you can't be um charged um with prostitution but even like the u.s state department notes that um you can still be prosecuted under this law if you don't actually like um point out who your who your um who the person who trafficked you is like you have to cooperate with the police in in getting them arrested and you also can still even in these states you can still get charged with like other crimes that they made you commit like if they make you steal or if they make you um forge any documents then you still can get charged for those problems so what they're actually specifying is not that it is legal for you to have sex for money but that you cannot personally be charged with prostitution which is an issue in the u.s so you you can't incur a charge for being trafficked so basically, Lana, what I'm saying is not that it's going to be a What I'm saying is that when you decriminalize it, you decriminalize it for everyone, even the underage. I was just like reacting to your claim that uh, underage sex workers were illegal. I was just saying that it's literally false in New Zealand because it decriminalizes it. It's not illegal. That's, a, that's, what it, that's what decriminalization is. It's no longer a crime. So in New Zealand, it's no longer a crime to be an underage sex worker. That's what it, that's what it is. Like de facto, that's what it is. But... Uh, let's move on to the next one because it's not the only thing I wanted to um, to react to. So you say that uh, none of those like solution like abolitionism, um, uh, legalization of it, regulation of it have ended uh, sex traffic. That's actually true. Uh, just so you know, uh, I do believe that decriminalization is a lesser evil, and the worst thing is like the legalization. If you look at the situation in Germany or, or Netherlands, it's a mess. It's a huge mess. It's a huge failure. The mayor of Amsterdam himself was saying how it was a naive and big mistake to legalize it because it just increased the sex trafficking by a lot. It gave a lot of power. It was basically uh, giving power to the to the pimp and the and the sex trafficker. That was that was it. Now it's legal. That's what it is. So I agree with you. If you want to argue that decriminalization is better than legalization, yeah, sure, that's fine. But that's not my point, and that's not what I want. I don't want legalization, and I definitely don't want decriminalization as well. Now, uh, you said that it, did, that it didn't end the sex traffic. That's true, but it's not about ending it. You cannot end it. That's a, that's a fact. There is no way that in our current society you will get rid of 100% of the sex trafficking industry. It's just not possible, unfortunately. Unfortunately, what we can do, however is to not increase it. And empirical data, empirical studies show that in 
that that like I have a study that I actually posted. Uh, I can post it again if you want. Um, do, 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 do. Yes, here it is. So it's a solid data made uh, on 150 country that show that in every country that either legalized it or decriminalized it, no matter which form of decriminalization, those country um, increase the sex traffic. In, and it makes sense. It's like, it, it generally makes sense because when you decriminalize it or legalize it, you uh, increase the market for it. Unfortunately, when you increase the market, you are going to increase the demand, but the offer of it, due to the nature of the industry, is not going to catch up because the women that are that are living in the country, uh, they they like only a tiny minority of them want to do it uh, among the, the sex worker, and the vast the vast majority of the sex worker who, by the way, uh, uh, go into the legal definition of sex uh, sex trafficker. Sex, sex, sex traffic uh, victim, those women, if they are not enough to uh, respond to the demand, what is going to happen? The black market is going to jump in and is going to import new, fresh women from poor country. That's what happens every time. And that's why when you green light the sex industry, you automatically increase the sex traffic. And that's why they didn't do it. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something, a good analogy for it. All right, I think it's interesting. In today's society, we are not allowed to, to sell uh, our, our organ. Like if I wanted to sign a, paper, a piece of paper with a company that says that when I die, you will sell my organ and you will give the money to my close one. I am legally not allowed to, say, to do that. Do you know why? Why? Because if you do that, you are going to create a market. And if you create a market for it, you are going to create a, you are going to increase the already existing black market about organ traffic. And obviously, this is a huge Pandora box that you don't want to open because if you open it, it's going to lead to, tr to organ traffic, organ abuse. It's going to increase it. That's why the state don't want you to sell, to have the possibility to sell your organ, even if it's your right as an individual. Your, your, your individual freedom, you should be allowed to do it, but the state won't allow it because if they allow you that liberty, they are going also to allow other people that are more vulnerable than you, that are not in your position, to be exploited by it. That's why it, it doesn't allow it. And this is the same, the exact same reasoning with sex work. It's not because there is a few women that are free to choose to go into that because they want to, that we need to accept it because if we do that, we are also going to uh, um, to expose the most vulnerable people in the industry to exploitation. That's why we your individual freedom is is worth less than the consequences of it. Again, that's a Pandora box, and this is a Pandora box that is supported by empirical data as I just posted. Now, uh, a third one that you said. This one is going to be quick. All right. You are talking about client. You are talking about the disabled people. Uh, you are talking about those like people that uh, generally need that. Again, uh, studies show uh, that the vast majority of the of the customer are not like desperate for it. They are not like uh, virgins, uh, ugly people that don't get any woman. They are not disabled people. No, they are rich, married, dude. That's that. When you talk about a customer, you talk about a rich, married, dude. That's what it is. All right, there is like, it's not 100% of it, but the vast majority is that. Uh, you say that women can choose. Yeah, sure, you're talking about a minority of women. Yeah, but if, you, if you're making general, generalization based on a minority of the sex working uh, people, then you are going to expose the vast majority of them to, to exploitation. That's what you don't want to say that women choose to it. When you say, for instance, that it pay more. No, it's not true. It do, it's not necessarily true. For some women, it pays more than McDonald's. For some offer, it doesn't pay shit. Also, you undermine by saying that, by saying that it pays more, etc. You are like kind of uh, entertaining the idea of the pretty woman movie, that it's a, it's a fun thing to do, right? It's not. The real condition of sex workers are, are abhorrent, all right? We are talking about like a nightmare for the majority of them. Right, we are talking about depression, uh, PTSD, drug abuse, suicide, physical abuse, uh, repeatedly rape, 
um, well, that, that's the reality of sex worker. It's not a, a, a good paying job, right? They're getting exploited, by, by the way. Uh, next thing. You said wait, about wait, the wait, 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 wait. You, you said like four points. You need to let me respond to some of these. Okay. So, okay, okay. Um, if you want. So, a, so you brought up this study. Um, <clears throat> you, you, you brought up the study. And I want to clarify that um, the study says that, um, that countries that have legalization experience a larger degree of reported human trafficking. Okay. So, I, I do want to point out that there is a possibility that um legalization may make it more clear to um like uh it may mo be more clear to um legal entities that um that like what is trafficking what isn't trafficking um because like for example so a lot of people have talked about um i've, I've had several sources that talk about including the state department that say that there are a lot of misconceptions about what trafficking is and what it includes and what it looks like um especially on social media and literally um it it's um it's very difficult for law enforcement to actually deal with trafficking because there's a lot of conflation with consensual sex work which is like a huge issue like people will report things that they think are sex trafficking but it's someone who's consensually doing sex work um and like obviously like there is a reality of like survival sex work um which sucks um where people are consensually doing it but maybe they're in like a poor um financial situation like that sucks um but for them it's more worth it to do that than to work at mcdonald's or do any of the other legal jobs that are available to them um so i do want to point out that like your study does show that there's more reported trafficking but that doesn't actually mean that there is an increase in trafficking necessarily um also, the study specifically notes that, like, the people who are legally doing prostitution um, or people who are legally doing full-service sex work um, do enjoy benefits um, from being employed in the industry. And, again, this is only talking about legalization. This isn't talking about decriminalization because the only country that's done it is New Zealand, which does have issues with not prosecuting um, – trafficking um enough like for example like the state department's recommendation for new zealand is to increase their sentencing for people who are traffickers that's like a really easy solution it's completely unrelated to decriminalization um the second point you made was about organ selling comparing organ selling to sex work is not analogous um you're talking about poor people who will sell something that will, they will literally never get back or get an equivalent value from they will never be able to buy that organ back and therefore like they will literally have health issues for the rest of their life likely to rely on the government um this is not comparable to sex work at all um sex work is a service that you provide for a period of time. This is not something you're never gonna get back. It's not like your fucking virginity where you're talking about, oh, you're never gonna get your virginity back. Nobody cares if people have um, sex with somebody that isn't like their married partner. No one's talking about legalizing that. We're talking about people providing a service for a short period of time. Um, the other thing that you said was about married men who make up a majority of clients, and I, I haven't seen numbers on it specifically, but I'll totally believe you, and here's why. Married rich men being the main people who regularly purchase sex services makes sense because they have the most money. But I think the idea that they make up the most of demand and that like men who are disabled who literally can't have sex other places kind of doesn't intellectually make sense to me. Um, but regardless, I still feel that if you're not going to like make it illegal for people to have affairs then i don't understand why you have such an arbitrary line at saying it's bad to cheat only if you're paying for it um why is that illegal but having sex with someone that isn't your married partner that's not illegal but if there's money involved then it's illegal that doesn't make any sense to me okay so uh, i wanted to address offer stuff by the way but i will react to some of the stuff you just said because to me it sounds uh, a little bit off um, not in a bad way, right? It's just that I think you misunderstood my point. So uh, I I think that I heard you saying that being a sex worker is better than working in McDonald's? Um, in terms of pay and flexible hours, yes. Okay, so, but overall? Would you, I, I, it's subjective. It depends. Some people don't have the skills to be a sex worker, to be honest. Oh, okay. So I, I, I feel that, again, uh, the way you uh, you address 
the daily life of a sex worker, a full life, a full service sex worker, um, is stuck on the minority of them, the minority that actually choose to do it, and that thrive in it. Right. Uh, my point is not to contest that fact. It is true that uh, you can objectively, if you are happy about it, you can say that uh, being a sex worker can provide a better outcome than working at McDonald's in regards to the money. If you don't care about uh, uh, about uh, the the value, the symbolic value, you know, of sex, then yeah, sure, that's fine. But that's not the case for the majority of them. They don't choose to do it. If they if they could work at McDonald's instead, uh, most of them would do. If they don't do it, it's because they can't, because they are forced to do it, or because they just don't have like they have debt to pay. They have a child to raise. It costs a lot of money, so they cannot just afford to work at McDonald's. They need more money than that, and that's why uh, this is due to a failure of society. Now. Um, you were talking about my example of, uh, of organ. You said that it was not comparable. I disagree. Uh, of course, apple, apple are not banana. That's true. Selling your, your, your heart while you are living, <laughs> it's not the same as having sex with someone. That's for sure. Like, that's true. But the comparison is not about that at all. The comparison was about the reason why you don't want to open a market. Because if you open a market to the few individuals that are going to thrive in it, you are going to expose uh, the vulnerable people in the society that are going to get exploited by this market. That was my point. So of course, Apple are not banana, I understand, but uh, the consequences are really similar. And the reasoning behind the fact that most most states, like the majority of states around the world, don't want to decriminalize it is because they agree that uh, if they do that, they open a Pandora box that is going to lead to the exploitation of the most vulnerable people of the of the society. Now, uh, you say that you don't care about the brothel. Uh, that's 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 not that's not a fair issue. I disagree. Um, I can show you something that is. Um, I, like I want to be clear. The, the... I do yeah. want to be clear, okay. just for my position, that sure. um, my you don't have to support brothels to support decriminalization of like independent like sex workers. Just to be clear. Well, I mean, all of the example that you that you quoted. Uh, decriminalized brothel as well like it is decriminalized in new zealand it is decriminalized in australia and it is decriminalized in the us as well so your position is not the position of the country you are using to defend your position basically anyway um i, I didn't say that i was supporting like new zealand's without issue because like i i do have some issues with like what new zealand does um i was just talking about decriminalizing um buying and selling sex at the very least sure. Um, and I'm open to um, also talking about like the issues with brothels, but I like I, I that's not my main argument. Just to be clear. Okay. Well, I I do think that when we are talking about decriminalization, we need to look at the brothel fact because it's not just a thing. Like it's not a part of it. It's really important because it directly impacts the the outcome of decriminalization and legalization. Like there is a huge difference between a country that decriminalizes everything and a country that decriminalizes everything but the brothel in the outcome on the uh, influx of sex worker. For instance, if you decriminalize the brothel, you are going to have high, a higher sex trafficking uh, uh, raise than if you don't decriminalize it. That's like, again, in the study that I showed. Um, uh, one last thing. You say that I was like focusing only on the sex work part of the slave, of the modern slavery. That's not true, no, actually. No, in my, not you. In, in, in my introduction, I actually mentioned specifically the difference between those two, I mentioned the sweet shop that you talked about yourself. I also added the agriculture industry that rely a lot on the modern slavery. So I do understand that modern slavery doesn't necessarily equate sex trafficking. However, sex trafficking is a huge part of it and we should not just ignore it. We should focus on it, especially in the context of a debate about uh, decolonization. Um, yeah, so that was like the counterpoint I wanted to make. So now, if you want to address anything that I just said, go ahead. Um, if not, before can... no, before that, um, uh, just so we can, because uh, this is uh, getting more heated than the normal, which is not heated really? at all. Yeah, I mean it's, it doesn't look heated, but people take turns like usually. This is not. This is like, I wanna I wanna go back a little bit, and uh, remind you. Uh, of course, uh, you can, uh, Lana. You can uh, respond to all the the arguments of uh, DiCaprio. But just, I just want to remind you the proposito, the, the, the reason of this debate is to convince me uh, to whether uh, sex work 
should be decriminalized or shouldn't be decriminalized. Now that you guys have laid out the uh, after you finish uh, Lana, uh, the uh, the facts, the empirical facts, uh, you can uh, you can uh, start convincing me, and in, in, in that sense, like you can go uh, take another routes because the uh, data comparison the, the measurement of that is just uh, not going to further and we're gonna return to circular uh, uh, like argumentation okay habibi uh, lana please uh, go and then uh, we, we we can continue like uh, taking taking turns okay. better, right yeah go ahead lana good job um i don't i i i don't really care about brothels um i i don't think it's relevant to the conversation to be honest um, and also, um, I wasn't accusing you specifically of not caring about other forms of trafficking, but I am noting that the U.S. does prosecute, like, literally, they have, like, 214 types of, uh, cases that are involved trafficking, and, like, 195 of them are sex trafficking, and it's great that they're addressing it. Um, my point was that, like, we need to do more to combat all different forms of trafficking, and fo focusing only on the sex industry isn't helpful, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, uh if it's okay i would like to change topics um so that we're we're not being circular i i would yeah. like to talk about scds yeah um and and health and safety um so earlier you were talking about um in your opening you talked a lot about suicide drug abuse murder um and things like that like happening um i think specifically from the client mostly uh like murder murder from the client and uh being assaulted and blackmail and kidnapping and all of these other things and um so a lot of um sex workers refuse um to go to the police and they have a bad relationship with the police um because they know that um they know that they'll be prosecuted under criminalization um for prostitution if they go to the police with any of these crimes um, it is very difficult to go to the police when you are being prosecuted. This is seen in um, undocumented immigrants. This is seen in, um, you know, a lot of minority communities because of racism, um, where the, you know, a, a, the worst relationship you have with the police, the less likely you are to um, report actual crimes, even if they're, um, you know, unrelated. And so, um, you know, I think that decriminalization literally fixes that problem um and it also you know not i i didn't want to get too back into the um sex trafficking thing again but to be clear um clients and um sex workers are a very valuable asset to getting people to um like uncover trafficking victims because of the fact that they're like in such close relation to seeing them and, um, you know, like clients, uh, like, so for example, in Canada, they specifically have end demand laws. So clients are illegal, but sex workers are not. And um, a lot of clients will see um, people who are being trafficked and they can't report it because they don't want to go to the police. Um, and so like criminalizing people does not deter crime <laughs> to the people um, who are being criminalized. Um, so, yeah. Huh? Okay. Okay. So my take on this is simple. There is three reasons why I think you should, uh, because it's you that we need to convince, right? So uh, there is three reasons why uh, I think you should uh, uh, back me up on this. So the first one is that uh, decriminalization uh, inherently increases human trafficking. So modern slavery, basically. So if you decriminalize, you increase sex slavery. That alone. Uh, should be enough to uh, make you really reconsider the decriminalization uh, argument. Uh, the second one is that uh, sex work, full service sex work, is not any normal job. It's not something that has that you can equate to working at McDonald's, because the trauma that people go into, the reason why they go into this job, are vastly different. People work at McDonald's uh, for many, many, many different reasons out of desperation. It is kind of similar to the sex work industry, but you don't have all of the social stigma. You don't have all of the mental harm. Uh, I know that we we don't need to pass source, but I just want to back that up for the audience because this is actually a really good read. This is basically a full psychological study and survey about uh, hundreds of sex of full full service sex worker, and basically every single like like think about a mental disease, they probably uh, are into it as well. 
they they are working as a as a full service sex worker is uh, a, a life of misery, a life of pain, a life of abuse, a life of self uh, hate for the vast majority of them. And I I understand that it's it's not necessarily good to stop a minority of women to become entrepreneur and engage in that uh, like freely. I understand that, but it is a necessary evil because if you you cannot just selectively allow those minority of women without exposing the vast majority of the most vulnerable people in your society to that kind of abuse. So it's, it's that's why I mentioned the sex uh, the organ um, example because the logic is the same here. You don't want to allow a, a few individuals that are crazy enough to sell their arm or their leg for money. Or this, when I say crazy, I mean crazy, like desperate as well, like mostly desperate enough. If you are in a precarious situation, you really need the money to help your kids or your family. Some people might be okay into selling their arm, right? They will be fine with it. And they will feel that it's unfair for society to not allow them to do so. But if society allow those specific individual, desperate individuals that are pushed into that decision process to make it, then it's going to expose the vulnerable population into uh, organ traffic. And it's going to increase it as it increases the, the, the sex trafficking in regards to the legalization, legalization or decriminalization. Uh, my third point uh, that I want to make in regards to this is that the solution is not the good one. Decriminalization is not a solution. Decriminalization is, decriminalization is giving up. We created the condition where uh, human traffic, sex traffic, and 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 sex full service sex work uh, have actor in it. We created it. We created it with with two like with two main uh, parts. The first part is our sexism, like our sexist society that. Uh, make people think that they are entitled to own a woman's body. We need to fight that. That's why we need to focus on the buyer. We need to educate the men, and we need to make them uh, understand that a woman's body is not a commodity. Uh, we used to think that uh, that it was natural for a man to own another human being. We call that slavery. It was natural and normal. It was okay. We fight back against that, and we get rid of that. And nowadays, we understand that owning another human being is bad. We need to go to a point where we understand that um, buying the consent of someone else by using your money and exploiting the misery of another human being because this, this human being need this money to get sex is not the same. Uh, having sex is not uh, uh, any, it's, it's not something uh, similar to being abused at work, um, like work, having to work hard, having to work overtime. It's not the same thing. That's why we have a separate section for rape. Like think about it. Rape is not physical abuse. Rape is rape. There is a difference between punching someone in the face and raping them. There is a, there is a huge difference in it. If we want to normalize the sex act as something that is just a community, if we really, really, really want to be sex positive, then how can you be sex positive and argue that rape has an intrinsic, intrin like has an inherent, uh, specific, specific um, aggravating um, aspect that will differentiate it from a big punch in the face because both of them are objectively a physical abuse. You punch someone in the face or you insert your genital into someone else's genital. That's what it is, right? But we understand that rape have a lot of issue with it, specific to that act of sex because we understand that sex is just not any a uh, 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 a random thing. We understand that it causes trauma, it causes harm to the individual. And in the study that I posted, you can see that the result of sex worker trauma is huge in regards to depression, STD, not STD, PTSD, etc. Uh, so we need to improve. We we need to improve. That's why I said we need to improve. We need to improve by giving, by making sure that those vulnerable people are not out of option, that they have Plan B, that they can pick that will uh, not force them into choosing this uh, false choice. So we need to uh, improve our social welfare welfare, but a lot. W once we do that, we will definitely fight against all kinds of uh, um, uh, abuse and, and, um, and coercitive uh, uh, exploitation. But 
by by decriminalizing it, we give up. We give up. We say, okay, as a society, we are not able to give proper like life outcome to those minorities, those women, those child that are poor and desperate. We are not able to help them. So we are just going to let this damaging, damaging industry do the job for us. And that's a failure for us. So that's my um, three, main reason why I'm against the criminalization. Wait, is that is that our final point? Because I thought we were still going back. No, and no, forth. no, no, no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um. So the study that you you showed, like what countries are surveyed, because that's really important. Because comparing the conditions of women who work in legalized, decriminalized, and criminalized countries is very different. Criminalized countries always have worse outcomes for all sex workers, even if they're consensual. Decriminalized countries specifically have better outcomes for consensual sex workers and pretty much the same for people who are being trafficked. Um, and that, that's basically my whole point. So which countries are cited in the in the study? Because um, it seems to be not just New Zealand or, or anything. And even when they are talking about New Zealand, it seems like they're only talking about street workers who inherently have worse conditions than most other people. Um, because they're inherently poor, usually trans, um, sometimes migrants. Um, and it seems to include something about China and like some other countries. So you're, you know, like an issue with the study that I would say is that it doesn't, um, it, it's not very forthright about which countries it's talking about. It also is comparing like Portugal, like all these, all these different countries who have different levels of criminalization, um, but th they're not really treating them differently, which you should because you you can't compare street workers in one country to inside workers in a legalized country and then you know anyone in a criminalized country like they're completely different um so the study that you actually um one of your sources i looked at um that that analyzed pra was very good and actually supported my point a lot um it talked about how um um literally um most sex workers um, have better conditions under criminalization, or under, I'm sorry, under decriminalization um, after PRA was passed. So the the act that made decriminalization possible in New Zealand, and also in the conclusion, they actually talk about how um, uh, sex work did not increase as an industry after the fact. So more people did not join just because it was decriminalized. Because a lot of people argue, well, you're opening up the floodgates and there's going to be so much more demand. And there might be more demand, but there aren't more people joining, um, which is awesome. And it talks about how across the board, um, most people report that they have better conditions from criminalization uh, or decriminalization. I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of big words. Um, so, and, and you also talked about how um, rape is wrong, but uh, you're it's calling all sex work rape. Um, I feel like, um, I, I do understand what you're saying about how um, sex work, when you take money for it, you're buying consent, right? Um, but I think it's really weird to talk about it with um, sex work, but not other forms of work. So if you're making a social, socialist critique that all work is actually exploitative, I don't disagree with you, but I think it's really odd how people seem to single out sex work specifically as ultra exploitative to the person, but no other form of work. You know, uh, healthcare where you can get exposed to many um, communicable diseases. In the military, you can be literally like killed or. Um, you can literally um, be, um, you know, a quadriplegic after you leave. You can get so many health issues, so many psychological issues, but nobody brings up um, these things. And also um, earlier in your opening, because um, I still have notes on everything, um, you were talking about how, um, oh my God, what was it? Oh, which one? <laughs> One second. Oh, you were talking about how sex work is gender-based violence, right? Um, and I, I don't entirely disagree. It is definitely a gendered thing. 
But to criticize sex work um, and not the military for being gender-based violence is very hypocritical. None of us are going to argue that we shouldn't have a military because it's gender-based violence. But we are going to argue that sex work is gender-based violence and therefore shouldn't exist. And we should criminalize and prosecute people who are sex workers. Even if you made an argument for end demand, it would be better than, than arguing for criminalization as a whole. Um, because at the very least, then you're not prosecuting people who are being trafficked, basically. Um, but you're you're basically punishing people for the gender-based violence that they um, become subject to without a real critical analysis for how this maybe applies to other other forms of work. Um, I don't I don't entirely agree, but I don't entirely disagree. Like there is a point about to be made about how um, you know you are kind of buying consent, but that's true of all jobs. And this is true of jobs where you can be injured for life. Um, like the military, for example, um, if you are a miner, if you mine coal or anything like that, like you can have lung issues for the rest of your life. In a lot of workplaces in, in like the 70s and 80s in America, there was a lot of asbestos that people were exposed to. And again, like the, the solutions that we have for these jobs is give people more rights, let them unionize, let them have more um, workers' rights. But when we're talking about sex work, it's criminalization. That's the answer. Okay, um, nice. Thank you, Deco. Um, and uh, Lana, um, uh, you are, Deco, you're allowed to respond. And uh, uh, since Lana started, Lana's gonna end. Um, Deco, uh, you're allowed to respond, then give out your closing statement. Uh, and remember the closing statement should be related on why uh, we, like why uh, and into convincing me why I uh, why we should uh, criminalize sex work. And uh, Lana, you're not allowed uh, like you're, you're uh, allowed to finish with uh, your closing statement and that's it without responding to Deco. okay. Go ahead, Deco. So the opening statement and the closing statement. Okay. So um, I, I, I wanted to address um, some stuff, but actually I'm going to address them anyway in my closing statement. So it doesn't really uh, do a lot of make a lot of difference. Um, my, my stance on it is not criminalization. It's not what we are doing right now. What we are doing right now is the reason why we have so many uh, sex trafficker. My point is that decriminalization is not going to help out the vast majority of women that are not going to uh, get help from the state because it's no longer a crime, because for them it's still going to be a crime. If you decriminalize it, you are going to decriminalize it for a minority of women, not the majority of them. So it's the minority of women for, for that are going to benefit from it are already in a comfortable position, kind of. The minority that are going to suffer from it uh, that, that is suffering from it are still going to suffer from it because they are in an illegal situation. Again, again they are either like already trapped into a sex trafficking ring, they are under a pimp that is like treating their life, uh, beating them up, they are getting exploited by their boyfriend, they are getting exploited by their, 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 their family overseas because they went there for that because of sex traffic. Uh, they are like illegal because they are underage <laughs> even though like in the country that decriminalize it like new zealand apparently being like an underage sex worker is not a crime that's not a word i want to live in to be honest but that's how it is i guess um uh, in 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 the in the in the um, in the ideal of decriminalization as lana stated i do believe that she don't want that to happen so i'm going to be fair and say she don't want to decriminalize it for the underage, but still, if you don't want to decriminalize it for the underage, then you cast out the underage sex worker from any benefit that the decriminalization is going to have, because those sex workers are not going to uh, appeal to the authority, because they are in an illegal position. So what we need to do is to uh, attack the root of the issue. The root of the issue is the failure of our society. We failed because we created those social situ and economical struggle that push people to go into such a destroying uh, industry. It is, like, factually. Um, we need to get better at uh, our social uh, safety. Um, we need to provide economical and social opportunity to those victims of, of, of this industry. Uh, and we need to uh, go to be more aggressive on the uh, buyer. 
we need to shame them. So my idea, for instance, I think that would be a good alternative, would be to not decriminalize it. It will still be a crime. The rule of law on the buyer, and we would um, uh, condemn the sex worker into a paid community service with some training yeah. and help them out of their misery. So, and once they do that, they don't have any criminal record. Like it's it's off. They can start a new life. They are getting saved of this uh, precarious and dangerous situation, and we are going to reduce the demand for it by enforcing the rule of law on the demand because no man should to a woman body because they are richer than them, basically. Um, uh, one last thing, though, um, sex, sex work is, is, is not the same as, offer, uh, as working at McDonald's. It's not the same. That's why I don't subscribe to the idea that all work are rape. Rape is rape. That's why, and I don't think you addressed that point, though, that's why we make a distinction between physical violence and rape. Rape has a specific component into it that is due to the sexual nature of it because we understand that sexual intercourse is something specific. Uh, we don't sell, we don't, uh, we don't sleep with customer when we work at McDonald's, right? There is no like sexual intercourse involved, and this sexual intercourse is unique to uh, the sex work industry. So this is why we cannot just compare it to any for any other industry. The sex work industry have this uh, inherent traumatic trauma trauma uh, in it due to the fact that you are basically getting raped for money you are like selling your consent for to richer men that are exploiting you and your misery uh the study that i that i posted show like the 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 over representation within the sex worker industries full service uh to be specific sex worker industry in uh trauma suicide at the death rate you are like like i said earlier like at the beginning of my statement when you start to become a, a full a full time sex worker, your average life expectancy is seven years. This is not like something that you want to uh, de 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 um, decriminalize. And lastly, like I, but this is my, maybe my strongest point. Um, it 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 does increase um, uh, sexual traffic. It does it, like in every country that did it, whatever the the form, legalization or decriminalization. And it doesn't change like the survey that has been done uh, does, doesn't doesn't going to change the situation of the majority of them that are not going to be the one that are going to benefit from uh, a better like a view of society because they are living in an illegal situation anyway. So yeah, we should we should not decriminalize it. We don't want to give a green light to crime. We don't want to increase sex slavery. We want to help out the victim of the sex working sex working industry. Who are the worker? We want to help them out and give them a better outcome. So we need to improve as a society, and we can do it. And we need to uh, make sure that the idea that it is okay for a rich man to uh, buy the consent of poor women is not uh, acceptable in our modern society. Thank you very much for listening. I'm done. Nice. Thank you, Lana. Your closing statement, and uh, we're gonna go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so sex work is always going to be demanded. Um, this is, this is just true. Um, there are always going to be those who are willing to provide sex for a certain price and those who are going to be willing to pay for it. Um, there need to be conversations about how to make this job sh safer, just like other industries, um, how to provide more support, um, how to reduce STDs. I didn't even get to get into it, but, um, you know, like the United Nations uh, program for HIV AIDS um, literally talks about how, um, you know, like, like uh, decriminalization is actually really important to reducing HIV AIDS spread across the world. Um, and it, it it's because when you have decriminalization, it's easier to negotiate uh, condom usage for everyone. Um, it is very difficult to negotiate condage condom usage with people when you have the constant threat of police over your head. Um, 
while the results are unclear if legalization ultimately does for good more good for people as a whole whoever is not covered under these legal protections is a potential target for being robbed trafficked sexually abused or murdered um, there are ways to use sex workers and their clients as a network of people to end trafficking, but this is impossible while they themselves are being hunted by the system. Um, decriminalization will not end trafficking, to be clear. They are um, kind of related tangentially, but they're not directly related. Um, so for, you know, New Zealand does have things to do to um, increase their efforts um, against trafficking. Um, but... Uh, it is a first step, and the health and safety of consensual sex workers is currently at stake while criminalization does nothing but exacerbate the demand for trafficking and the issues that consensual sex workers face. You can't use this minor this this um, group of people that get larger in poorer countries, people who are trafficked, um, to end the rights of people who want to be doing this work. Um, yeah, that's that's basically my point.